bring them up. Let's give the brother a hand. Hallelujah. 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 First and foremost, give them all honor unto the creator of heaven and earth, the God of our ancient forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Secondly, give them due respect to my teacher, principal of principal. Amen. I come from the same school that you've been hearing about all night, Shema Yisrael. Right. The little children that you saw lined up there, I was there when I was 15 years old, I'm 36 now. I think we produce some good people. I see Yashu Bell, where you at, brother? I see Yashu Bell, let me just say something really quick, because sometimes people... Okay. Let me say something really quick, because sometimes information is in the air, and there's no discernment in the air. Uh, brother Nasi, that's a title. Nasi in Hebrew means prince. His uh -huh. name is Yashuda. Woo! And that's our prince, that's our teacher, and that's our leader. And for me, that's my brother. And I stood on the same line with him because we're the same age. And we know each other over 20 years. And it was through me coming through his father's school, who I consider my father as well, my spiritual father, because as we're going to see in some of our presentation today, some of the definitions that we have for mother and father is quite different than the way we've been using them in today's society. So today we're going to get a crash course on how to talk and discern when it comes to these ideas. And me, first and foremost, what I'm going to establish this moment right now is the legacy of the school that I come from. The school that I come from has produced some very, very powerful thinkers. And I'm not saying this school don't have powerful thinkers, but in this moment we got the mic, so let's do what we do. Come on. Some very powerful speakers have come out of our school. You may not agree with everything that we say, but I guarantee you this, something that we say is going to inspire you. And one thing I know about those great people before my eyes right now, and as I'm looking out in the audience, I realize that all of us don't share the same views. Nope. All of us don't even call them the same guy. But one thing, when I'm looking at this audience, I'm looking at one people, and that one people has a name, and it's called Israel. Period. I don't care what you want to face the earth. This people that we're looking at right now is Yisrael. So with that being said, we're going to get into a very beautiful presentation that I prepared based on a book that I just wrote and released. The book is entitled Matriarchs of the Covenant. Um, and by the way, Zion is my real middle name. And my real first name is Alice. So on Facebook, people know me as Zion Lex. Lex is short for Alex. But I want to give you a reintroduction because my name was Abdiel and Lev. Abdiel. Hallelujah. So this book that I wrote is about empowering women from all walks of life from the perspective of the Torah. In this instance, because I'm a person that I don't bite my tongue, I'm going to ask that everybody that's having a side conversation, please show me some respect. Word! Word! And I'm going to look it around and make sure that I'm getting that respect. Because people that came out here tonight and paid their money didn't pay to hear any sidebar conversation. So excuse me. Come on. With that being said, we're going to get into the first slide. What is a matriarch? Mm. That's a question that I definitely want to answer. Can I have a sister tell me what a matriarch is? Uh, we have a room full of sisters right now. What is a matriarch? Come Doesn't on. Doesn't matter your age, young, old. Any sister in here right now want to tell me what is a matriarch? And there's no right or wrong answer, so don't be shy. I just want a sister's opinion because this book is about showing the glory and the power in you. Therefore, I would like for a sister to help me with this. Any sister want to take a stab at this and tell me what is a matriarch? Oh, y'all know what you need to go pick somebody. Yup. Okay, y'all know who y'all talking to. <laughs> I ain't gonna learn today. Shalom. <laughs> what is the nature of my sister? Hallelujah. That's all. There's no right or wrong answer to this. The nature of is a what? Y'all heard us say a what? A virtuous woman. That is one of the credentials of, or uh, one of the, uh, 
criteria for how Yo, we start up on my shot. And I'm gonna open the biblical text to give you a little bit more insight on that idea. So I'm gonna give you something that is an excerpt from my book. So I'm actually quoting my book. And yeah, I'm promoting my book while I'm doing the lecture because I was lazy to write something. But at the same point, I'm giving you something that you can actually go out and get for yourself and gain so much more understanding of the topic. So I'm going to read from my book, and I'm going to first say hallelujah. What is a matriarch? Understanding the contribution of a matriarch is vital to the growth of a nation. In fact, the word for mother or matriarch in Biblical Hebrew is sometimes used interchangeably as designated a nation. You understand what that means? Based on that alone, when you speak of nation building, you automatically are speaking about a matriarch and a woman or women on a whole. Because you don't have a nation unless you have women, period. Men, through the power of the Almighty God, establish the order of this nation. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if I can look in this room and I can't find out a mere woman, we don't have a nation. With that being said, we have to dig deep within our spirit and give our sisters the honor, respect, and glory that they deserve. Because whenever we speak of the nation of Israel, what a matter can we attach a woman's name to that. Understand that. From the perspective of the Torah, women are viewed as the builders of the home. What do you mean, Avdiel? Uh, I didn't go outside. I don't see too many women that's into carpentry, too many women that's into masonry. So what does King Solomon mean when he say that women are the builders of the home? He's talking about a spiritual builder. Huh? He's talking about women are the spiritual builders of a home. But we live in a society dominated by male opinion. And we don't like to give credit for the, the strength and the wisdom that comes in a home from a woman. The wisdom, strength, and beauty. We're going to do that today. Talk about Guma Oz Dubar. Talk about Not in the sense of masonry or carpentry, but in the sense of spiritual and intellectual stimulation and growth. Thus, the book of Proverbs says, Forsake not the teaching of thy mother. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. The biblical matriarchs play an immense role in spiritual empowerment of the people of the book, i.e. Israelites. Thus it's written, He who finds a wife finds a good thing. And I need help for a second. And while I'm needing help for a second with this, I'm going to explain the use of the term find a wife. Anybody just want to Delve deep within your mind for a second and contemplate on what it means or what the speaker meant when he said a man who finds a woman. You know, to speak of finding something, it means that you're looking and you're searching, right? right. So what does that mean? That means every sister that walked by ain't the one. Because the Torah is saying that the one that you need is one that needs to be sought out and found like gold. That's right. It's something precious. You see, things that are precious don't come a dime a dozen. You gotta search far and beyond for them if it's precious. So that means every sister who got a got kids around, I can't talk. What? But you be all grown in here. Every sister who has a shapely body may not have a shapely mind or soul. Woo! And if you choose to bear children with that way, imagine the image of God that is produced. Do not produce the image of God. Because if her spirituality is not a reflection of the divine essence of God, you do not have the divine image of God of which she also comprises with you. Therefore, it is imperative to us as men, as fathers, as husbands, to realize that not every sister you see is a sister that you should be chasing. The first thing that you do when you have a desire or an interest in a woman is find out where her mind is at. That's right! find out where your mind is at. And like my brother was saying, you might even want to ask, What's your nationality? I like this guy. <laughs> Adam and Eve. Who's familiar with Eve? Just show your hands. Raise your hand. Who's familiar with Eve? All right. So in describing the spiritual prowess of woman, and I'm going to ruffle some brothers with this. In describing the spiritual prowess of a woman and the fact that she was given to man as a gift, 
Did he just say that? I said it. Want me to repeat it? In describing the spiritual prowess of a woman, in the idea and fact that she was given to man as a gift, I don't like the way this brother's talking about it. What you mean, woman is a gift to a man? The Creator said, after he formed man and every animal that came before man, that man made before a woman was born, the Creator looked at Adam and said, it is not good that he be alone. When the Creator says something is not good, he's talking about the idea of perfection. Because at the end of creation, the Creator said, and everything was told me, oh, very good. Which again entails perfection in all things created. And in looking at man, and him having no spiritual opposite, he said, you being alone is no good, or in Hebrew, no tov. Therefore, I shall make him a woman, is there connected? But you know, we rather read the Bible in the English language alone. And therein lies the problem. You see, number one, the English language is a bastardized language. Right? So what does that mean? It's a conglomeration of several different languages. But there's some things that we can learn from the English language because I'm a person that will teach and show you that Hebrew let me say that again. I'm hoping it's going to run for somebody's so. side. Hebrew is the origin of all languages. Take your time. Every language on the face of this earth has its base and stem in Hebrew. Yeah, he said. Woman's gift is termed kenegdo, which comes from the Hebrew verbs neged as well as hagid. Neged in Hebrew means to oppose or stand in front of. Let me say this first. Part of a woman's gift to man is the, uh, her ability to tell a man when he's wrong. Yes. Do I need to say that again? Yes. Part of a woman's gift to man is her ability to do what? Neged, to oppose him. Right. How do you attain perfection in life? Is it by being surrounded by yes men? No, sir. So if we apply that mentality to our home, Brothers, do you honestly want a woman who agrees with everything you say? Hell no. Who's seen coming to America? Ha! Y'all know where I'm going with this. The brother had a fez on, chill. What the hell you want to tell this bride from Zumunda? <laughs> hop on one leg. What did she do? She hopped on one leg. He said, bark. She said, boop, 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 boop. Come on, I ain't that old. Y'all saw it too. Wake up. Right? Why is it that that wasn't the woman for him? Because Eddie Murphy knew something that most men don't like to entertain. Part of finding a good woman is finding one who has her own opinion outside of yours. That comes from God. Because no one man knows everything. So the fact that God placed Eve before Adam is because Eve is going to come to tell Adam some stuff that his spiritual composition is just not built to see, and vice versa. And we as men need to understand that. Women, oh, I'm gonna work this book. Y'all gonna love this book. I'm gonna promote it. I'm gonna promote it because it's great. And because I'm But it's great. Hagin literally means to tell. The Torah states that Adam named Eve, and he named her Shawa, because she mm. was the mother of all living. Mm. I saw a couple hands raised when I asked the question of who knows Hebrew. So we know that in Hebrew there's two different ways that we can establish a Hebrew root word. There's a trilateral root, which is based on three letters, and then there's a binary root, which is based on two. When you look at either the binary root or the trilateral root of the word Chawa, or the name Chawa for Eve, it actually isn't life. But I'll tell you what it is. Who's familiar with the book of Psalms, chapter 19? Mm. Declare the glory of God. Is mm. that the verse? Mm. The Hebrew word for declare or to speak is called Kei Vav Hey. Chawa. The very name that Adam named Eve means to declare or to speak. But you got brothers that say, Women, shut up in my presence. Because the first woman was named to speak. 
That's why they talking now. That's right. Go ahead, sister. Keep clapping. Chawa <laughs> denotes not just life coming from the verb chaya, but it also denotes speech. For in Psalms 19.3, it states that night unto night declares knowledge. The word wow. in this passage denotes the act of declaring knowledge through speech is none other than chawa. Wow. The great verb base for Eve's name in Hebrew. What does this mean? This entails that women are considered life-giving, not just because of their procreative physical nature, but also because of their knowledge-declaring spiritual nature. Wow. For as King Solomon says in Proverbs 18.21, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Wow. His name means both life and to speak, so you can meditate on that real quick. Uh. So that, contrary to popular opinion, Men and women are both builders. For according to the Torah, God built the universe via speech. Woo! The Torah as the blueprint. Using sound. Damn. He talking baby names, but I really know who he is. I might have to skip because I need my brothers to speak, and I definitely. He know that everybody going to get it, but I'm like, wow. Track out when I realize that modification and things need to, measures need to be taken in order for me to introduce other speakers. So I'm actually going to skip past some of the main elements of my book. But before I do that, I just want you to capture some of the images. The images you're looking at are actually in the book. The words adjacent to it on the left are actually in the book. Yes, again, I'm promoting the book. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm gonna touch this real quick because I heard a lesson the other day from Ali Muhammad. Uh-huh. Zion, why do always thought each other? Oh. <laughs> Black in Hebrew is shakur, which literally means to seek or discern. But well, open up your English. Wow. Language. What would they tell you the word black means? Strange. Ugly. Uh huh. And fearful. What uh. is the Hebrew definition of black? It means to seek and discern. That changes the scope, my people. Hence, in the Torah, it represents dawn, the blackest part of the night from which light emerges. Thus, black from a Hebraic perspective literally means the place from which light emerges, and thus we learn that all seven colors of the rainbow have their origin in black, which is the initial stage of the emergence of light. So, when we open up that ancient book of King Solomon, Shir Hashirim, or Song of Songs, where it says, I am water. and deeply desire. And I have to rush, I apologize, but we'll get this point out. Dr. Ali Muhammad sat on his son at his couch not too long ago. <laughs> um, I believe my brother Devon Prospect was there. And during Dr. Ali Muhammad's opportunity to speak, he took a shot, a pop shot at the Torah. And yes, I'm quoting the book of Proverbs Torah. He took a pop shot at the Torah and he said, why is it that I can open up your Bible and find an apologetic statement for being black? Because he says, when I open up the King James Version of the Bible, it says, I am black, but comely. That's apologetic. Anybody who has common sense will agree. He might actually have a point. But here's the problem. He don't read it from the Hebrew perspective. Mm. And if y'all still holding on to the book that is only reading it from an English perspective, you need to step the game up in terms of your own culture. Wow, that's right. That's right. Because in the Hebrew, it does not say but at all. It does not use the word but at all. Ooh, what the, what does it say? It says in the Hebrew is I'm black and deeply desirable. There's mm. no inference in there. Right. Check me. Ah. Uh. Knock this piece off the board. I wanted to touch on the board, but then it's got to speak. Oh, These man. are the seven prophetesses mentioned in the Torah. What do you mean? Women were prophetesses? What was a prophet in Israel? It was somebody that declared the word of God. But I thought women can't speak or teach. Well, guess you're wrong. But we had seven prophetesses. Seven well, Elohim. I'll tell you right now, her name was Deborah. She was a prophet and a judge. Like in Dragon Ball Check Z? This out. 
Who remembers Pentecost in the book of Numbers? And in his zeal, what he did. Raise your hands. Pentecost from the book of Numbers. Come on, Israel. When I see y'all outside, y'all pull scriptures over there. Pentecost. Right? In his zeal was promoted in the eyes of God. He was the son of Eleazar, which is the son of Aharon. He was contemporary with Deborah, the prophetess, but she was chosen to be a judge in his era. Think about that. In his great zeal, as a man of God, coming from the line of Aaron, from the line of Eleazar, she still beat him to become a judge of Israel in that era. Think about that. Ouch! Zion, what are you doing? Why is Harriet Tubman here? The, your book she was a Hebrew. She's a Hebrew. I'm going to show you why. But before I do that, our sisters need to come and sing that song real quick. Woo! I like how you did that, Mo. Introducing the Lord is my honor and my pleasure. All glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, nah. I can't even eat this if I'm holding the camera. Trouble the water. 
sign up real quick, but for one more second, please give our sisters a round of applause. They only did this overnight. I reached out to them. Sounds just beautiful. And the reason why I reached out to them is because while I was being a geek at home, <laughs> thank you, sister. Thank you so much. I found out something song. about Harriet Tubman that you're going to only find in Torah. Harriet Tubman in her era was known as Grandma Moses. Harriet Tubman knew the entire book of songs by heart. Oh. According to the books that are written about her, Harriet Tubman memorized all of the songs in the book of the Torah, or the Bible. She knew it by heart. And guess what? According to them, she could read or write, but she knew it all by heart. But in her wisdom, she always wanted to see her people free. So what did she do? She said that she is going to come up with a way to see to it that her people are free, at least in her era, while she has a break of life in her. And guess what? This was a woman who stood as a woman or as a matriarch. And you have men that listen and She stood and risked her life. She used to run around with a shotgun. Some of us probably scared to put our hands on. That's right. That's right. Respect our sisters. The Torah relates that when Moses, remember Harriet Tubman is known as Grandma Moses, correct? The Torah relates that when Moses grew up, Pay attention to the language, grew up. Meaning when he reached maturity, that he saw an Egyptian being a Hebrew slave. And he immediately acted in defense for the slave. That's right. The phrase in Hebrew, when Moses grew, he went out and saw his brother under his burden getting beat, is numerically equivalent in Hebrew to 1840. Oh man, take your time. Take your time. The same as the term Underground Railroad in Hebrew. <clears throat> and remember, Harriet Tubman is known as Grandma Moses. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, Harriet Tubman, when she was 12 years old, which is the age of young adulthood for women in our culture, 